165 universities happen later. That doesn't mean that, that they don't have the character. And each of them will be peculiar to it. So this, then the other argument was, look at uh, this university established in Annamalai. Well, Annamalai was established because there was a private person. It's not a minority institution. Annamalai Malas was a private person who was the founder of that university. He handed over everything to the government and said, but I want, as a founder, I want control over, over, over the staff. I want control over uh, nominations and stuff like that. They said, fine, you take it. Okay. But how do you apply that test to an university under 30 or a minority institution? I mean, each institution and the founding moment is entirely different. For each university will be different, Mother. See, you can't, you can't, you can't make an argument of uniformity that every university must be in the same manner, established in the same manner. It can never be. Universities anywhere in the world will be established in different manners, depending on the time, the, 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 the level at which society is placed, all that will be factors. Malas. So that takes care of that argument. Malas. The other thing is that, uh, let me now just see if there's anything left. Malas, so I want to quit. Um, that, can be no surrender of a fundamental right. How can there be a surrender? I can't waive it, I can't surrender it. If in 1950, I was an institution established by the minority, there's no question of surrendering anything. But if I have not established, and if Basha is right, that because I was incorporated, then of course it's another issue. So Malats, the administrative argument that has been made is without reference to the scheme of the constitution. It has no relevance. The only relevance is was it established. Now, Malaz, I'll on surrender. In St. Xavier, it says it is doubtful whether the fundamental right under Article 30 can be bartered away or surrendered by any voluntary act or that it can be waived. So, Malaz, that whole argument, mm -hmm. the reason is that the fundamental right is vested in a plurality of persons as a unit, or if we may say so, in the community of persons necessarily fluctuating. Can the present members of a minority community barter away or surrender the right under the article so as to bind its future members of the unit? The fundamental right is for the living generation by a voluntary act of affiliation of an educational institution established and administered by a religious minority. The past members of the community cannot surrender the right of future members of the community. The future members of the community do not derive the right under 30 by succession or inheritance. Very powerful words. Justice Matthew and Justice Chandrachur, as he then was. Also, Kerala Malats, nor do we think that there is any substance in the argument advanced by Learned Council for Kerala that this bill has not, been in, has not introduced anything new and the Anglo-Indian schools are not being subjected to anything beyond what they have been submitting to under the Education Acts and Codes of Travancore. In 1945 or 47, when those acts and codes came into operation, there was no fundamental rights, and there can be no loss of fundamental right merely on the ground of non-exercise of it. There is no case of estoppel here, assuming that there has been an estoppel against the Constitution. There can be no estoppel against the Constitution. So surrender, estoppel, waiver, I just have completely alien to our constitution as far as fundamental rights are concerned. And 30 is part of fundamental rights. Yeah, well, as I, my learned friend talked about national character, that's nothing to do with the entry. Entry only says national importance. Now, well, as the other, just, just so that, well, because I have no time now, just, oh, I have 20 minutes. Well, Actually, I'm happy your lordship asked me to encapsulate it. I could, I will be able to finish it. Now, well, as just, I want to show you the present I have, have a chart of the, of the present universities established after 1950. My learned friend also made an argument. See, in the universities today that are established by the minority, there is a statement there that they are established under 30. But that statement could not have been there in 1920. It is the effect of Basha that that statement comes. Because of Basha. That can't be used that because there was no such statement there, Malas. You'll have to see from the facts of the case as to whether we were the ones who actually were the, who established the university with funds that we collected, with the vision that we had, with the intention of setting up a university, with the idea of helping our community. A loyalty to the British for the, according to me, the gentleman was loyal to his community, not loyal to the British. By thinking of trying to help his community, the loyalty that he was demonstrating was that to the community. Where the poor in, uh, amongst the Muslims who had no access to education. 
And Melis, may I just tell your lordships, your lordship asked a very magnificent question. All these institutions of national importance, what is the national character of these institutions? We did some research, Melis, and we found a very interesting feature that in IITs, Melis, page 33 of 1G of our note, Melis, very interesting. This 2006 figures, I think. Yes, yes, I'm only talking about the 2000 yeah. figures. Whatever figures I have, I'm giving it. I'm just showing. That's the time when the reservation was made and it was challenged. I am. Mother Yorosip has that paragraph 62. About one out of three Muslim applicants is selected in IAMs, which compares favorably with, in fact, a somewhat better than the success rate of other candidates. Despite a better success rate, Muslims constitute 1.3% students studying in all courses in IAM. 1.3%. This is the state today after independence. And whatever little the community has, you want to take that away also. And in absolute numbers, there were only 63 out of 4,743. IITs. In the case of the IITs, out of 27,161 students enrolled in the different programs, there were only 894 Muslims. The share of Muslims in postgraduate courses is just about 4%, but it is even lower in undergraduate courses of 1.7%. 1.7%. This is the factual, this is the national character of IIT that my learned friend is talking about. Only one out of 25 students enrolled in undergraduate courses and only one out of 50 students in postgraduate courses is a Muslim. The status of Muslims in PG courses is equally disappointing. Only about one out of 20 students is a Muslim. This is significantly below the share of OBCs 24%, SCs, STs 13%. So this is, this is the state of affairs. So, Maras, what do we have? We have one university, which is a university of excellence. And you want to say today that no, take it away. The argument is it's too good to be a minority. And even the private survey shows, shows one point only say 1.6% are Muslims. In 2019, I'm talking about, but that's a private survey, Maras. But this is, this is government for IITs and IIMs. I'm talking about IITs and IIMs. 2019, private surveys say that. And done by for, done for the IITs. So now let us kindly go to my chart in the beginning of this note. Yes, the the, the index. You know, I didn't say anything turns on it. You said that these institutions must represent national character. So what's the character they're representing? It's non-denominational. Uh, it is not denominational. It's a right, fundamental right given to the minority. Diversity, we are admitting. But as, as I said, this university has, has graduated thousands and thousands of non-Muslims. St. Stephen's, but as thousands of non-Muslims. Some of them sitting here, some of them sitting there. Madhav Menon was a product of AMU. He did his LLM and PhD there. So what are we talking about? Secular nature of education can never be discarded should never be discarded. If it is, Malaj, it's violative of people's fundamental rights. But we are imparting secular education. But we have certain elements that, that have something to do with our community. And as I said, what do, if my learned friend is right, and he's right, there was no reservation. But the fact of the matter is there was institutional reservation. So from MAO college, people came into the university. So there was enough Muslim students because of that. From the, from the schools that they came to the university college. That's how much the representation was maintained. We didn't need reservation. But if you, if you throttle that, Mullahs, then where will we go? It is to make up for the lack of representation in other institutions that you have an institution which is an institution of excellence. Now on what, why do you want to take it over? I don't understand this, Mullahs. I've not understood the rationale for it. That why do you want to take it over? Is there something that this university has done, which Malaz is anathema to our constitutional values? So nobody is taking over. No, no. I'm, you are making an argument that because it was incorporated, it is not established. That's your whole argument. If you are taking over, but you are saying it's not established. Therefore, you will take over. What will be left? Malaz, you can appoint anybody you like. Then there will be sixty percent reservation also. Fifty plus ten now. Then what will be left? So these are very dangerous arguments, Mother. I mean, one little citadel of learning, one little small citadel of learning in a country of 120 I mean, sorry, billion people, what? 
What are you, what are you, 1.4 billion people, what are you trying to do? Small institution. And so, Malas, just the contents. One factual argument on administration, Malas, I've already done that. I've shown that, Malas, I've given the pages because it's all structured here, Malas, with the pages and the cross references. Broader analysis of Article 30, just come to page 11. At the bottom, broader analysis of 30. Respondents have argued that in order to determine whether a particular institution is a minority institution, a, a twin test must be satisfied. First, the minority must show that they established it, and second, they must demonstrate that they are administering it. That's the wrong test. It's an absolutely wrong test. This argument of the respondents is mounted on the strength of the word and in establish and administer. That's my the learned solicitor, my dearest friend, Mother, he's been arguing this. And legislative debates do not render AMU a non-minority institution. Yeah. Right, your lordships have to look at only the aspect of establishment. Yes, I want to show that chart, which is that page. One H. Well, let's, I hope you have it. One H. Yes. Now, this is Malad's. There are two charts. Uh, the first chart is the comparison between Aligarh Muslim University and MAO College. MA also had external supervision, just like AMU. Now, no different. Anyway, the, 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 what I want to say is that whatever restrictions were there in MAO college in terms of supervision, the same came in the AMU. No different. Consistent with that statement, we don't want any interference. We are acceptable on supervision. And MAO was accepted by Basha as minority. The only change being it was incorporated, therefore you lost your minority statement. Overriding powers were there even in MAO. It's just simple. It has to be, mother. somebody has to ultimately be responsible. In any educational institution, you just can't leave it to the institution and the principals of the college. So the same.